Hello and welcome to the third module of session two uh, in supply chain management. In this session, we will continue our discussion on network, uh, supply chain network optimization, and we will take uh, the scope a little further than what we had uh, in the last session. But more or less, uh, the context will be very similar. Okay, so let me introduce you to the context. Now this diagram, uh, the network diagram that you see here, uh, is straight away taken from uh, the previous uh, module. So I hope you remember that we have uh, a set of sources or supply uh, locations. Uh, we have a set of destinations or demand locations. And the path, you know, any arrow, any path represents the flow of goods from the supply to the uh, demand location. And uh, here, uh, let me now uh, explain how this particular model that we are discussing uh, is different from the previous one. It is different in only one sense. And that is that we have a certain number of plants and we want to decide that do we really need all the plants? Can we work with only a subset of all the plants? If that is possible, which means that if we are able to close certain plants, then we might be able to reduce our cost further. So that is uh, the additional point which has uh, come in in this particular context. Okay, so in general, nothing has really changed. If you see our objective function, now this part of the objective function, which is summation Cij Xij, remains the same. Our first constraint and the second constraint more or less are the same, okay? The only difference is our introduction of another set of variables which we call the yi variables. i stands for the plant, okay? And therefore, if there are m plants, you know, i varying from 1 to m, Similarly, we will have yi for all these plants. So we will have a y1, y2, y3, y4, and so on till ym. Y is a binary variable which can take value of either 0 or 1. Zero value means that that plant is not going to supply anything in fact, zero would mean that we would go ahead and close that plant. On the other hand, y equal to 1 would mean that we are going ahead with that plant for which the y value is 1 and all the capacity of that plant is available for supply. Okay, So that is the only difference we have introduced here. And therefore, what is going to be my total cost? My total cost is the sum of the total fixed cost and the total variable cost. Now, earlier, we had ignored the total fixed cost. Although each of the plant did have a fixed cost, we had ignored, we had not taken into account the fixed cost of the plant into our consideration while optimizing for the solution. And the reason was obvious. The reason was that the fixed cost of the plant was not going to change irrespective of the solution that we get. In the previous module, module 2 of session 2, we were doing this example of capacity allocation in the case of a company called Telecom 1 
which had three plants and three markets, the total capacity of the plant was far, far greater than the total demand of the market. And we found that the optimal solution proposed that Wichita, the plant at Wichita did not produce anything. Okay, zero production at Wichita. But did that mean that the fixed cost of Wichita was not taken into account? That we did not incur the fixed cost of Wichita? Of course we did. Even though we did not produce anything in Wichita, which means that the variable cost pertaining to Wichita was zero, but the fixed cost of Wichita plant is a fixed cost. We have to incur that in any case, as long as that plant is operating and we are running that plant. And therefore, there were no Y variables in the previous example because all the plants were operating and we did not have to decide whether to close a plant or to open a plant. So in a way, the fixed cost was a sunk cost. You know, it was there. It didn't matter. It didn't matter at all in deciding the optimal solution. But that is not the case any longer. In our context here, we are saying, yes, we can go ahead and close plants. And therefore, the why is going to matter. And therefore, the fixed cost must get added because, you know, what is the fixed cost? The fixed cost is FIYI, which means that each plant fixed cost multiplied with the Y for that plant. Which means that if the Y value becomes zero, FIYI for that plant will be zero. And therefore, we will take out the fixed cost from the total cost. It is no longer a sunk cost. Okay? So therefore, in the cost function, we have introduced or added this summation FIYI to the total variable cost that we had earlier. Similarly, if you look at the second constraint, we have said that the total supplies coming from the ith plant must be less than or equal to the capacity of the ith plant only if the capacity is available, which means we have to multiply this with yi. Once again, a yi value of 0 would make the right hand side of that constraint 0, which means that there is nothing that can be supplied from that plant. You know, its capacity has become 0. Okay? So, so this is the, so there are only two changes. Let me summarize. We have added a fixed cost component here, summation FIYI, and we have multiplied each of the capacities with the YI, corresponding YI, so that we decide whether the capacity is at all available to be used or not. And of course, you know, we have two more constraints. The first constraint is that all our XIJs are non-negative and the second constraint is that all the YIs are binary, which means that they can have only value of 0 or 1. Here we take an example. Okay, so we did... Uh, this example called Telecom 1 in the previous module. Now, in the same uh, sector as Telecom 1 operates, there is a competitor uh, which is called High Optics, okay, HO, and uh, these two competitors decide to merge, you know, for some strategic reason, uh, and therefore the total, uh, you know, number of plants post merger the total number of plants for the merged entity are actually five, you know. So we have Baltimore, Chain, Salt Lake City, Memphis, and Wichita, okay. And the total number of demand locations have also increased to six, Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Denver, Omaha, and Portland, okay. So this is the total scenario of the merged entity uh, called TOHO, I am calling it TOHO because TO stands for Telecom 1 and HO stands for High Optic. 
So what is the problem? <laughs> the problem is that the total capacity of the five plants is far, far greater than the total demand of the six markets. And therefore, the question being asked at the time of merger is that, do we really need to operate all the five plants or not? Okay? So that is the question that we are asking. So, all other data are given to us. We have a set of 5 into 630 CIJs. Uh, we have a set of five uh, capacities because there are five plants. We also have five sets of fixed costs corresponding to those five plants. And we have uh, a set of six demands for the six markets. So let's go ahead and do this problem. So here we are, we have got our uh, data and I have introduced the space for decision variables. So let me highlight, you know, this set of decision variables, which means I make them, let's say, yellow. Now this, the, these are our XIJs, okay? But in addition to XIJ, I also have another set of decision variable next to the XIJs and let me call these the YIs where one value of one for YI means that open that plant and zero means close that plant. Okay, so we have two sets of, uh, of, of um, decision variables. Now once again, I am going to add our total supplies, so supply from, okay, and uh, supply to, now supply from each plant, from Baltimore, the total supply will be the sum of the flows to the six markets from Baltimore. And therefore, I will say this is equal to sum starting from here till here. And then I will copy this down. Okay. So these are the total supplies coming from each plant. And then here I will write my capacity. Now, where is my capacity for Baltimore? The capacity, in fact, uh, yeah, so the capacity for Baltimore is here, okay? So this is the capacity of Baltimore, the monthly capacity. But I need to multiply this capacity with the corresponding Y for the simple reason that I need to use the capacity only if it is available. If the Y value is zero, that capacity is not available to me. Therefore, the capacity effectively should become zero. Hence, I am multiplying my available capacity with the Y value for that plant. Okay, so, so there we are. And I can copy this down automatically. All the other formulae will, uh, will be fine for the other plants. Okay. Now, what do I place here? What is the relationship between total supplies and total capacity? Total supplies must be less than or equal to, and therefore, let me just copy this down. This is just a visual aid for us for simplicity. It's not that we cannot solve the problem without writing these. Uh, we can. Okay, so what are the supplies to each of these markets? Now, for Atlanta, the total supply is sum of the supply coming from Baltimore, the supply coming from Chain, the supply coming from Salt Lake, Memphis, and Wichita. Okay, so that's the total supply coming to Atlanta. 
and uh, I copy this down till Portland and I place our demand here just below the total supplies to each market and this of course must be equal so I have put the equal to sign good are we done no we aren't because we still need the total cost <clears throat> and the total cost is remember the total cost is the sum of the total fixed cost so where are our fixed cost let me use the sum product function where are our fixed costs our fixed costs are here so I have picked up the column of fixed cost but I have used the sum product because this needs to be multiplied with the corresponding y value here I hope you remember that this was summation f i y i so we have done that and then I need the variable cost so for that I again write some product and this time of course we pick all our CIJs comma all our XIJs and enter and the total cost is coming to be zero which is absolutely fine good now we are set we can start our solver dialog box the target cell is the cost cell it is a minimization problem so I have chosen minimize what cells are we going to change where are our decision variables our decision variables be very very careful please note that we have picked up not just the y, uh, not just the xij's but also the yi's together all of them taken together constitute our decision variables let's start with our constraint we add the capacity constraint of plants total supplies from must be less than or equal to the available capacity here then we add our demand constraint total supplies to each market must be equal to the total demand at each market we need to add the binary constraint for the y values so here are our yi's okay these must be binary so I have chosen binary and finally all our xij's must be non-negative so I make it greater than or equal to zero okay in option I assume linear model once again because clearly this is a linear model and press ok and then let's click on solve and see what happens wow so here we have our solution and let's interpret the solution it tells us that our minimum cost is going to be $47,401,000 very very interesting to see our y variable values the optimal solution tells us that Salt Lake City and Wichita plants need not be continued any longer so we can very well meet all our demands with three plants okay and we must close down Salt Lake City and Wichita for us to minimize the total cost we are given the supplies coming from each of the plant obviously the supplies from Salt Lake and Wichita is going to be zero we note that the capacity utilization in Baltimore is less than 100% but in chain it is 100% and 
and at memphis it is 100% we are also given the supplies coming to each market from each plant the xij values okay so very very similar to what we have done earlier except for the decision variable yi which is a binary variable and of course we now understand why we needed to introduce the yi binary variables and uh, so that is this what we will do is that very quickly we will take up one more example involving our yi values for that let me go back to the powerpoint yeah so toho is done we now come to our second example which is called sun oil and this also is taken from uh, the textbook now let me explain this situation here there are five supply regions now these are very very broad regions as you can see these are north america south america europe asia and africa where sun oil is thinking of locating its plants or refineries and the same locations are also the markets north america south america europe asia and africa okay so we have five sets of uh, source nodes and five sets of destination nodes a total of 5 into 5 25 decision variables xij okay now here also uh, we have demand given for each of the markets the only difference is that we are given two sets of capacities for each of the plant location the capacity could either be a 10 million unit capacity plant or a 20 million unit capacity plant or maybe both a combination of a 10 million unit and a 20 million unit so we have two sets of capacities here and corresponding to these capacities we also have a different set of fixed cost for the lower capacity and another for the higher capacity plant so we are given two sets of capacities and two sets of fixed cost of course we are given all the cijs as well now let us go ahead and use excel to find the solution to this problem we go back to our excel where as you can see i already have our data preloaded good now please note i have created the space for the decision variables xij and we have already said that there will be 25 xijs but the difference with respect to the previous example is that instead of having only one set of y i have two sets of yis okay so the first set of yi this set i will say for low capacity plants and this set of yis is for high capacity plant okay so i have two sets of yis now my supplies from each plant i am going to do a sum 
of the supplies coming from the plant at North America total supplies and we are going to drag this down copy it for all the other regions so those are the respective total supplies coming out of the plants in that region now these I'm sorry I don't have space here uh, I don't know if I reduce a little bit I don't know whether it will be visible to all of you or not so let me not take the chance uh, let me see if I can reduce this one here and uh, further perhaps this one here I can perhaps reduce this also a little bit yeah so I am fine now so these are my total supplies from each of those plants I will now place the capacity for each plant or each region rather in this case now please note how we calculate the capacity for the North America region this capacity is equal to a combination of the high capacity and low capacity plant so the low capacity plant in North America multiplied with the y value for the low capacity plant in North America plus the high capacity in North America multiplied with the corresponding y value and then I enter copy this down for each of the plant regions or the supply regions okay so I hope this is clear that we get the capacity of that region with a combination of the 10 multiplied with the y here plus the 20 multiplied with the corresponding y here good supplies coming to the markets we are already familiar with this this is the sum of all the column entries and we are going to drag this and cover all our uh, five markets now of course I forgot to put our sign here the constraint is that this should be less than or equal to so that's it and here I place our demand at each market and the relationship is that the supplies to a market must be equal to the demand at that market good so we have put our constraints what is going to be our cost our cost is again a combination of fixed and variable cost but this time please note that we have two sets of fixed costs so I am going to have a sum product for the low capacity fixed cost where are our low capacity fixed cost here they are the low capacity fixed cost multiplied with the y values for the low capacity plants so that captures one set of fixed cost plus I have some product the high capacity fixed cost multiplied with the high capacity y values so we have got two sum products for two sets of fixed cost plus a third sum product for our variable cost which is all the cijs comma all the xijs so please see if I can point out on the screen for you at the top if you can see here we have got a sum product for the low capacity fixed cost sum product for the high capacity fixed cost and finally the sum product representing 
all our variable cost so enter we open our solver dialog box uh, the target cell of course is the cost and we want to minimize that uh, what cells are we going to change well we are going to pick up the entire set of all the variables please be very careful here we are not only selecting the xijs but both sets of y i's as well so we have picked up all our variables the constraints are fairly simple the first constraint is on the capacity side so this which is the total supplies from the plants must be less than or equal to the available capacity the next constraint we add is that the total supplies coming to the markets must be equal to the total demand we need to add two more constraints the first is so let's add the the constraints are that all our y i's must be binary and finally all our x i j's must be non negative good so we have our four sets of constraints i will again go to option and click on assume linear model because i am sure you will understand that we are still with linear models here and then click on solve oh we have a solution here and uh, it is very very interesting the solution and what it says is uh, that look at the y variables and it says don't have any low capacity plant don't open any low capacity plant as far as the higher capacity plants are concerned please open a plant in south america one in asia and one in africa okay so for this demand we need to have plants in only three regions and those regions are uh, south america asia and africa once again what are the supplies coming from each of those plants well in south america we are consuming the entire capacity same is the case with asia except in africa we are not consuming the entire capacity so in these two regions the utilization of the available capacity is 100% and of course we are meeting all the demand and we are given the supplies that are happening uh, you know which plant to which location how much quantity are given by the xijs are uh, just one uh, mention or one uh, comment on this particular number that you see here uh many of you may already know this but there is no harm in my repeating that whenever in excel you see e e stands for 10 to the power this is the exponent of 10 and 10 to the power minus 15 is as close to zero as you can ever get so therefore this is practically zero okay in case you had any confusion regarding it so there we are we have uh, solved our problem on sun oil as well and that brings us to the close uh, of this final session uh, uh, the second session rather uh, which was on locating facilities using network models and optimization